Welcome back to Tree Kai Psychology. I'm Chaitanya Leela and thanks for watching my other videos and particularly the other video with Blake Lively. Um, I wasn't going to do a commentary on this particular interview because it's just been going viral and many people have. However, I just find it interesting and I think it's interesting to break down the psychology of something that's going on and I think actually what's going on here is something that probably many people experience in their workplace you know in their family in their community um so yeah you've probably already seen this but I'm going to pause it at times and give some commentary on what I think is going on psychologically First of all, congrats on your little bump. Uh, congrats on your little bump. <laughs> what about my bump? So, <laughs> so when the interviewer is congratulating Blake Lively on being pregnant, um, she does it in quite a you know sweet way. Uh, congratulations on your con congratulations on your little bump. Um, now. She is publicly known at this point to be pregnant. However, Blake Lively makes a lot of assumptions in this interview, which is why the basis of why she she's coming off uh, rude. Um, she probably feels justified in her own mind and in her, her own perspective. However, her perspective is completely based on assumptions. And you know that saying, when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and me. So Blake Lively here is assuming that the interviewer uh, is seeing that she's put on weight and therefore commenting on her pregnancy. However, she doesn't understand that the reason why the interviewer is congratulating her is because everybody knows she's pregnant. So, of course... That's the reason why she's congratulating her. The other example here of what people probably have experienced in their own life with this, what's going on, is passive aggressiveness. Blake, uh, instead of actually saying what she really thinks and feels, she has made this uh, backhanded comment congratulating the interviewer on her bump, uh, which obviously comes across very rude, given that she's not pregnant and essentially that's why everyone's saying that Blake has been fat shaming her. Of course, she's not fat. Um, she's not, uh, you know, at all in any way, shape or form looking like she's pregnant either. So it's a rude comment to say, but she's, again, it's this defensive uh, response that she, uh, Blake Lively has with interviewers. She feels the need to uh, defend against something and attack um, when, or just oppose. I think there's this oppositional quality about Blake Lively that I've, and I, and I, let me just sort of say this, I'm not really into celebrities and I, I don't really know anything about, obviously anything about Blake Lively, but I've never really watched, actually, I don't know if I have ever watched a movie of hers, maybe one. Um, anyway, um, but from the very few interviews and things that I've seen just purely off the basis of what's been going on with this new movie, she has this oppositional quality about her, um, which, you know, can be good uh, to being an independent person, an independent thinker, you know, a go-getter. However, the downfall of uh, that quality is that she can probably... Um, display that at times when she doesn't need to. Um, and I think this is one of them, right? There's an oppositional quality here of like, you know, you're saying that I look fat and, and that's not okay to comment on my body, which is actually what she's probably thinking. Because I did see another interview uh, where somebody congratulated her, her on being pregnant and she said something a bit more honest, which is, you know, are you saying that I look big, you know, in essence. So, that's actually what's going on here. She doesn't like that there's comments about her body. Um, but of course, she's interpreted that, assumed that, when actually um, the interview was commenting on her pregnancy. So, you know, we all may have experienced times when um, we are in a situation where somebody says something underhanded 
And we don't know how to respond because it's a slight against us um, when actually the person really feels and thinks something else. So the best way to respond, and I think that the best way that interviewer could have responded is, Blake, what do you mean by that? Because I'm not pregnant and I'm just congratulating you on your pregnancy. Um, I don't have a bump, I'm not pregnant. So are you saying that I look big or do you think that I'm pregnant? You know, when you have a passive aggressive comment towards you, always respond with questioning and curiosity. Oh, what do you mean by that? What, right? Because what you want to do is you want to get the person to be honest because they're not being honest. They're, they're saying something underhanded. So by questioning, um, you can get to the point. And that will actually make the other person feel uncomfortable because they're gonna have to face themselves. They're gonna actually have to face what they're thinking and feeling instead of hiding behind um, their passive aggression. So that's one big thing here, but but the same thing continues here with the passive, passive aggressiveness. Oh, nice ones. Oh, I will say that the other actress, I don't know her name, I don't know who she is, but, um, she completely diffuses and deflects this whole situation. I think on an unconscious level, on an instinctive level, she's actually um, noticing the uncomfortableness and she's diverting the attention and making light and some comedy about it. Oh, what about my um, little bump, you know? And um, it diffuses and it deflects and there's some laughter when actually everyone's very uncomfortable. I mean, you can see it in the interviewer's face. There's tension, right? <laughs> tension in the eyebrows and the eyes. Yeah, it's not comfortable. They are kind of bumps, aren't they? No, not bumps. The lovely lady lumps. Check okay. it out. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> are you like? Again, you know, Blake Live has actually succeeded in dominating the conversation actually so she feels quite at ease if you look at her she's a lot more comfortable and she's even you know referring to a song and uh singing that that those lyrics and um she succeeded in 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 dominating here uh and again with that if the interviewer and maybe it wouldn't have been professional of of the interviewer to do so she probably might have been in trouble with her bosses but if you are ever in that situation you can just Feel the discomfort of having a passive aggressive comment made to you and then come back with a, what do you mean by that? Tell me what you mean. Are you saying I'm looking fat or do you think that I'm pregnant? Because I'm actually neither. So what do you mean? You know, and then Blake Bobby might say, well, actually, I don't, I don't like people commenting on my bump. And that would have been fine. <laughs> we wouldn't even be sitting here. <laughs> it would have been fine if she said, you know, I don't feel comfortable with it. And that's okay, but she's not doing that. Um, it's coming across rude. Movie, are you Woody Allen fan? I love most of his movies, and this one was so like visually amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Did you guys love wearing those kind of clothes that you? Yeah, yeah. And you know, working in yeah. digital. And at that point, it would have been fine. That question would have been fine. Uh, this actress on the right is actually about to answer the question. And there's a lot of genuine interaction there. However, Blake Lively is still being oppositional, doesn't like it for some reason, not sure quite what it is. Maybe she's still upset about the reference of her bump, um, but she still goes on with the passive aggressive behavior. Talk about the clothes, but I wonder if they would ask the men about the clothes. So she's not talking to the interviewer. Again, this is the thing with passive aggression. Uh, if you have, this is an example, you have a question that, or I should say you have a point that you're trying to make and you make it to somebody sitting next to you, but it's actually about the other person. Um, it's a passive attack, right? It's like, I'm going to make this conversation happen over here, making a point that I don't like that you're asking this question to me. Um, and, you know, would you really ask men this question? Um, but not asking the interviewer directly. You know, it's kind of a bit of a coward way out as well. You know, if you really had a problem, 
then just say it, just say it to the person. Um, and maybe you would have remedied the situation without, you know, having somebody leaving this interview, feeling like they wanted to, you know, quit their job entirely. Um, it is hurtful. But yes, so she goes on to assume that the interviewer wouldn't ask this question about clothing to men. She's assuming, again, it's an assumption. Uh, and it's because she's presuming, she's thinking something in her own mind. Um, and yeah, and, and, and being passive aggressive with it. I would, I love Jesse's. <laughs> and the interviewer's there trying to say, well, actually I would, yeah, I, I would. What, why, what, what is the problem with this question? I would ask everybody because apparently, and I haven't watched this movie, but apparently it's quite an, uh, aesthetically pleasing movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the interview was trying to say, yeah, I, I, I would, and she's doing it in a quite a gentle way, but there's no eye contact back from either of them. And now this actress on the right is colluding. This is the point where deflection has turned into collusion. She's now colluding with Blake being passive aggressive and entering into a conversation with Blake and becoming it being, it's now becoming a, you know, you and I think I'm I'm with you here because she doesn't continue to answer the question and it becomes about these two. And this is classic, you know, clique behavior. Cliquey, that's why, you know, it's being, they're being labeled mean girls. Clique behavior, uh, leaving somebody out, ostracizing someone. Uh, anyway, I'll go on. That's what I'm saying. His, his wardrobe was beautiful. Oh, know, Corey's wardrobe was gorgeous. Those so high waisted pants. He's so great. I would wish men wore high waisted too. pants like I know. that still. Oh. And the interviewers feeling uh, probably many things, but not comfortable being ignored. Again, this is classic clique behavior, ostracizing her. Um, and you know, I often say to my clients that have gone through being ostracized, and I myself have gone through being ostracized uh, in a community, and, and you know, I often say that being left out of, of, of a group is like uh, death, right? It's like you don't exist. And when people can um, ignore you and then lead you to feel like you don't exist, you're not being validated, you're not, you're not being connected to. Um, it can feel like death. And um, you know, because we because we experience emotions and we experience relationships through the other person, we through through our connections with others. And so when we don't get that, there's we don't get that feeling of existing. And that can feel really psychologically painful. Um, and that's what's going on here. And that's why it's so, that's probably why she wanted to quit her job because why would you continue putting yourself in situations where you feel, um, you know, like, like you are, uh, lower, lower class, you know, not, not good enough to be there. Um, it's really not nice. This, this is personally for me watching this is really uncomfortable because they are really ostracizing her and it's, it's just, it's not. It's just not a nice thing to do. Or the father with his with his, his tank top. Oh, it's so good. It's just like, it's just like you that. Catch you can the, feel the it. tablecloth on the on the light in the Italian restaurant. Oh, and the spaghetti I didn't notice it. that. No. But there's so, so much like, warmth of everything. You know? Yeah, it's not just the women that that <clears throat> have the clothes. Yeah. So see, she's the actress on the right. Finally, made eye contact with the interviewer. Um, which was the validation that she's still there. And this is about the interview and not just about their little chit chat uh, on the side. Um, and here Blake makes that, makes that point. It's not just about the clothes with women, but again, she's made an assumption because the interview would interviewer probably would have happily asked the men the same question, which doesn't, how can, how can Blake know that this question was only appropriate was only going to be put towards the women. It would it would only be an appropriate response of Blake if there were men sitting there and the interviewer 
didn't ask the men and only asked the women. Um, but that's not happening. So it's a complete assumption. But I feel like oh, we're yeah. going to get the conversation, but it's like yeah. every detail with everybody. Yeah, it was, so it was amazing to look at. Again, how she feels she feels like women get the conversation and men don't, but there's no men sitting there to even prove that in this incident with this interviewer. So it's coming across. Whatever it is that Blake is upset about, that, you know, women, oh, we only talk about the fashion, you only talk about the fashion with us. Uh, is being projected here onto this poor interviewer that's just asking simple questions. Um, so I think really it's that Blake needs to really understand what she's upset about and deal with that with the relevant people and the appropriate, the, the, the correct people, rather than taking it out on, on innocent people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not okay. You know, you've got to be responsible for your emotions and your feelings and communicate them where appropriate and this is what happens when you don't do that it comes out in in you know inappropriate times in these white it. suits yes and then you notice in la like everybody's in cream colors and all the men are wearing like white and cream and mm -hmm. then you get to new york and it's a little bit more browns and moodier and, and Susie really told such a story yeah um amazing. alongside vittorio because it's it is a lot brighter and sunnier in LA. so although there's more eye contact with the interviewer it's it's falling flat because they've already left her out so the interviewer is sort of like where is this going you know <laughs> there is a sense of why it's just, it just seems like words now you know what why is this being spoken of again and she's dominating the the dialogue here she's dominating the space and the amount of time She's taking and, and New York has just a steaminess to it. And I think, you know, the whole Hollywood glam is so glamorous. Mm -hmm. Can you relate to the things they were saying about Hollywood? It's so easy to get seduced by the fame and the money. And the oh, fashion. I see it all the time. You know, I think the interviewer handled this really professionally, really well, because um, after just going through that, she still just moved on to another question and you know focused on the interview and it does ease off here um but after that experience you know it's, it's a bit surprising that she didn't just leave i think i probably would have left <laughs> i wouldn't be interviewing them but i yeah it's just disrespectful that was one of my favorite things about the movie were the subtle turns to mm -hmm. their own um, transition into like the ego mm -hmm. of showbiz that Kristen has in mm -hmm. that scene with Steve Carell and then with with Bobby taking on the persona of a club mm -hmm. owner but still like these are things you do when you're in okay I had a bit of a glitch but here Blake Lively goes on to quite like a long time. someone that they don't um, because they know what the media has, has created of someone. And the disappointing thing is when you meet the people, they're always so much more awesome than, 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 than they're portrayed to be. I mean, that's, that's normally my experience. And even people that are portrayed to be really great people, they're just um, a lot more complicated and interesting and, and nuanced and caring and, thoughtful and that's all we I find that interesting actually she was talking about what was uh difficult or challenging about fame and the fact that she was saying that people think that they know you um but then she goes on to say that actually when you meet people face to face they're usually even more amazing or more complicated which is interesting response when you know essentially she's talking about herself when fans meet her um yeah that's always nice you know to see that your idea of someone isn't always who they actually are yeah yeah, yeah. okay thank, thank you, you. Thank you yeah that eye roll at the end that eye roll at the end first of all congrats on your little bump uh, yeah it was interesting at the end, the eye roll came from the, the actress on the right. Um, 
you know, which showed that actually her deflection and diffusing and the use of comedy was uh, fake because actually internally how she felt was some negativity towards the interviewer, which actually I didn't, when I first watched this, I wouldn't have known that until the eye roll, which again, just makes this even more uh, rude and uncomfortable for someone who's just simply doing their job. So the main thing that I got from here uh, that I've been talking about is passive aggression. When you're communicating difficult emotions or difficult ideas, um, you know, it's better just to be upfront and honest with people. Um, that way, your feelings about something don't come out in inappropriate ways like this. If you are dealing with someone who has a tendency of being passive aggressive, the best way to, to deal with it is, well, I mean, you can just sort of ignore it, uh, especially if it's repetitive and it's just a part of someone's personality. Um, you know, it's very difficult to be around someone who is is passive aggressive and and takes jabs instead of just being honest with what they think. But uh, if you do have to deal with somebody like that, then the best way is to question them. What do you mean? T tell me, tell me what that means because I don't quite understand in this context. What do you mean by that? Um, it can put the onus on that person to be to be actually honest about what they think and what they feel rather than you taking on the uncomfortableness uh, of their uh, you know disregard for for, for you um, actually so that was my breakdown or thoughts about this interview uncomfortable to watch um, but yeah and I'll see you next time bye